Hi, everybody. Rhonda Barkas, the manager for the Small Rural Hospital Transition Project. And thank you for joining us for this um, special webinar. Uh, I know this was just announced a few weeks ago, and I'll explain a little bit more about that in just a moment. Um, I know that all of the hospitals, all of you have a lot going on, and so um, many of the hospitals said that they would they would send a representative to listen to the information, but we will be recording this and I will uh, send you the recording of the webinar information so that you can share that with other leadership or folks in your C-suite uh, so that folks know the um, kind of all the information they need in making a decision about these special projects. Um, I'll also be sending you the document that describes each of the projects in detail. So thank you again, for everybody, for joining us today. Um, Andy, next slide, please. So as a reminder, we are the uh, Rural Health Innovations. We're a subsidiary of the center. And um, you know, together we work, we are the nation's leading technical assistance and knowledge center in rural health. And as you all know, we, um, we work very closely with many uh, rural hospitals and communities across the country. Andy? All right, so today uh, we, we did put aside an hour for this. I don't think it's gonna be, um, it's not gonna take an hour. It's really more of an informational webinar than anything else. And then also a time if you guys have any questions about this opportunity, we can, we can um, share a little bit more about that. So um, again, I'm Rhonda from the center. I'll be speaking and Lindsay Corcoran, who's a consultant with Stroudwater is also going to be speaking. And the two of us will be talking about these opportunities for the special projects. First, I'll talk a little bit about the background and how we how this opportunity presented itself. We will describe the the choice, the menu, so to speak, of the special projects from which you can choose. Um, we will describe a little bit about what the time commitment would be for that and um, a little bit about project timeline and then save some time at the end in case anybody has any have any questions at this moment. Andy. So this is your shirt team. You, I know that you have talked to many of us. Um, I know that you've been in touch with Kiona and Brooke and myself, and and Andy's been hosting our webinars for us. But this is our this is our whole team. Um, Andy. Yeah, and, and Janine Myers. She is our um, project officer from uh, HRSA, and she is. Um, on the call today as well, and um, is there just in case anybody has any questions about anything, but she's she's here to support us. I would have to say that um, it's been such a pleasure working on this opportunity to identify these special projects with Janine. She was really open to looking at ways that we can support you all. Um, additionally, during this very difficult time, in addition to your SHIRT project, which is either a QI project or an FOA project. Okay, Andy. And then the Stroudwater group. Um, normally, you guys would have met many of these folks when they were on site, but of course, the world changed very quickly in March. And so, as you all know, we are doing all of our shirt projects virtually. And so, uh, some of you may be in the middle of that, some of you may be just starting yours, and some of you might have just finished yours. Okay. All right, so just a reminder for everybody as far as the purpose of the SHIRT project. So this project is specifically designed to support hospitals that are in persistent poverty counties um, to transition to value-based care and alternative payment models, such as patient-centered medical homes, hospital shared savings, um, and to prepare for population health management. So moving really away from sick care and moving more towards uh, population health care. Um, so the consultations that you all are participating in, again, either fi the financial or the um, or the quality improvement, they really ta target the financial and quality performance improvement that bridges that gap between the current health care system and that newly emerging system of health care delivery and payment. Um, so the, that is the whole purpose and intention for the SHIRT project. Okay. All right, so I wanna go ahead and jump in and talk a little bit about the special projects and how this came about and the rationale for it. Um, 
as I said earlier, um, and you guys know that when we first meet, met and rolled out the SHIRT project and I met with each hospital team, we talked about uh, what to expect for the SHIRT project. We talked a little bit about the actual the amount of money that was going to each hospital to support the project as well as to support the consultant travel. Well, since things have changed, I think we only only one hospital had um, one on site visit and then everything changed. Uh, travel was suspended. Um, as a result of that, we had uh, a fair amount of, um, of funding that didn't go to travel. And so we were like, okay, so what can we do with this and how can we best support everybody? So that's when the SHIRT team met with Janine and we threw around some different ideas of ways that we could support you guys. Um, and what we decided to do is uh, with Stroudwater, we came up with a menu of nine, what we're calling special projects um, that were created. And the special projects are meant to be um, an additional support to you during this time in addition to your QI project and your FOA project. So each hospital, each of you is going to get to choose one special project of your choice that's going to further enhance your financial operation and quality improvements. Um, as we go through the list and talk about each type of project, what it includes, um, just know that the choice is totally yours. It doesn't matter whether you have a QI project or an FOA project, you get to choose the one that is most meaningful and helpful to you. Uh, we have purposely worked very hard with Stroudwater to make sure that these projects are not labor intensive. We wanted to make sure that it really felt like you were receiving um, just so much extra support without having to do big data collection or um, gathering a lot of additional information or doing a big application. So we really just tried to make this as smooth as possible so that all you really have to do is pick your project, um, do a, sometimes do a little bit of data collection or you know, participate with Stroudwater. So um, again, we tried to make this very, very um, easy for you. Uh, so we'll go through the information and then just so you know, an important deadline, July 2nd, which is next week, it gives you a week's time. Um, so that is next week on Thursday, um, a, day, a week from today is the deadline to submit your choice of project. So by that day, all we need from you is we want to do this project. That's all we need in the next week. The reason this is a pretty quick turnaround, of course, is as you guys know, this uh, shirt is a contract. It is not a grant. Therefore, typically money cannot be rolled over. Um, it is still up in the air whether or not we're going to be able to get in a little bit of an extension because of everything going on with COVID. But for now, we're just operating under the assumption, uh, assumption that our project contract ends at the end of September. Okay, Andy? So the projects may include, and again, it's going to depend on the project. It might include additional submission of data. I know that Lindsay had worked to um, create projects too where there would be very limited data that has to be submitted and it may be that all the data that you've already submitted to Stroudwater for your financial operational or your quality improvement project that might include all the data we need so there may not be any additional data at all. Some projects will require a pre-project planning call. Usually that's an hour, a half an hour, some maybe an hour, but sometimes uh, Stroudwater will have a little bit more information they need from you or we just do a little bit more of a planning. Um, some projects might include some sort of post-project call to discuss the findings and or the recommendations. Um, so there will be something like that. But again, we will be letting you know exactly how much time this is going to take for you. Um, and then some projects, like there's um, one around patient experience, improving HCAP scores, that might require some training for your staff. So again, those are the, some of the things that might be included or might be needed to participate in a particular project. And if you have questions about those specifically at the end, Lindsay can um, answer those questions as, as well. Okay, Andy? 
All right, so here are the nine types of projects that we are able to support. Um, and Lindsay will describe those in a moment, but there's cash flow projection analysis, payer contracting and reimbursement analysis, value-based reimbursement readiness review, critical access hospital cost report assessment, strategic pricing review and tool, provider contract review, emergency department operational review, swing bed directory, and patient satisfaction excellence training. Again, we were really looking to provide a variety of types of projects so that there would be something for everybody, regardless of what your need is. All right, Andy, if you will go to the next slide and I'm gonna pass it over to Lindsay to talk about each of those types of projects. And also, again, remember, Andy was saying that if you have a question, you can put it in the chat box or you can raise your hand um, if you go to the participant list um, and we can pause and answer your questions. Okay, Lindsay. Great. Thanks, Rhonda. Um, so I will uh, quickly just kind of give you a high level, high level overview of each of the service offerings. Um, and again, I am available, Rhonda's available to answer any questions that you may have if it has to come at a later date, you know, shoot us an email. Um, I'm sure I've already talked to the majority of the hospitals um, participating, so I do have your contact information. But um, we'll first start off with the cash flow projection analysis. And this is really geared towards um, a service offering related to um, COVID-19 and the CARES Act. And so, as you know, um, and hopefully you've taken advantage of some of the, the accelerated cash payments, the grants and the loans that have come out of the CARES Act. Um, and then, so what this this service offering, offering will do was to, to be able to kind of use this money um, and and apply a 26 week um, weekly cash flow projection um, utilizing you know the money and the grants and, and and the accelerated cash payments that have come out of of the cares act um, really th that 26 week um, cash flow projection will really um, allow you to kind of understand what the, the financial impact is and um, some of that expected timing. So this is really, this service offering is really related to kind of our current uh, situation with around COVID and the CARES Act. In addition, we, you know, we are expecting some additional money to be coming forth. So this could be a good opportunity um, to take advantage of that. Andy? Um, the next is related to payer contracting and reimbursement. Um, so what we'll do is we will look at two of your top payer contracts, um, commercial payer contracts, and, and provide you with some really some recommendations around um, if there's any issues that we see, um, any suggested changes that, that you could um, potentially make um, in your next contract negotiation period. Um, you know, just really looking for some opportunities to maybe um, enhance the reimbursement and the strategies around that. So um, again, it's just looking at two of your top two commercial payer contracts. Andy, yep, thanks. Um, next is around value-based reimbursement readiness. Um, so, you know, whether you are thinking about participating in an alternative payment mechanisms, you know, maybe it's an ACO or you would like to look at potentially doing some um, uh, payer contracting and, and value-based payer contracting, um, we can, you know, provide some guidance around, around that and, and give you some really some recommendations and paths to kind of um, and actionable steps for you to, to head in that direction. Um, and, and it would be through, you know, a, this readiness assessment that Stridewater has developed. Uh, critical access cost report assessment. Um, you know, and this might be um, folks that are participating already in the financial and operational assessment may not choose this, this um, uh, service, um, maybe folks looking at, you know, the quality assessment, this may be an opportunity because the finance um, folks already get a, a high level review of their cost report and that's included in the assessment report. So this may um, be for folks maybe um, uh, participating in the quality assessment, but uh, the, the cost report review will look at your most recent Medicare cost report um, and we will um, also hold a, you know, an interview, kind of a fact-finding um, call with senior management, 
And then um, you will receive a report identifying any opportunities for financial and operational improvement within your cost report. Um, a lot of those times, it, you know, it, it could um, have an opportunity around, you know, changing something um, and it could lend itself for some additional reimbursement through the cost report. So we uh, certainly, um, we, we've done many of these. Um, and as, as it says here on the slide, you know, historical returns on investment is really is a 25 to one. So um, we end up finding um, through the review of the cost report, some, some real good opportunities for you all. So that could be a consideration. Um, next is the strategic pricing tool. Now this is taking your hospital charge master and your revenue usage file. Um, it is uploaded into a, a Stroudwater file or web application that um, compares your charge master and, and revenue usage file with a whole um, inventory of, of other hospital charge masters. And we're able to kind of compare and benchmark where you know your CPT codes and your pricing is relative to to other hospitals. Um, you know, and and giving it a grade of a plus or a minus. So, if for instance, if your your MRI charge is you know ten times that of of peer rural hospitals, then maybe that is something to um, identify as as a pricing issue, and that we may you know want to to rethink our, our pricing strategy around um, certain elements in our, in our charge master. Um, provider contract review. So, I, so this is looking at, we will look at um, one of your physician contracts and a, a, actually a sample of it or a sample of um, your advanced practice provider. So your nurse practitioner or your, or your PA. Um, and really what we're looking for in the provider contract review is, is around um, best practices and making sure that they are, that there's no kind of issues or, or red flags um, as it relates to, um, uh, you know, fair market value or if, or if there's no um, outside of any regulatory um, requirements, if there's any issues or red flags around that. Um, you know, one thing, and then the recommendations that will hopefully come out of that is really looking at ways that you can use and leverage your physician contracts to better align um, with the hospital with your with your physicians. And um, ED operational view. Um, so this will have to since you know obviously when we look at the emergency department, it, you, you know being on site would be ideal. Um, but given that these are all virtual service offerings, um, what we would do for an emergency emergency department operational review would be to um, do, do some data analysis and kind of assess kind of your current workflows um, and efficiencies um, through interviews. Um, we'll also look at your MBQIP data um, related to ED throughput and your outcomes um, and your ED measures there. And then we'll make some recommendations for, for improving some of those throughputs based on really some best practices um, and, and also hold a virtual training um, for leadership as it relates to um, some of the operational changes uh, that we would recommend. And then uh, swing bed directory. So this here is, is, is a web-based, um, um, kind of inventory. Um, so what um, the hospital would do was would be to um, go on a, a, our Stroudwater website and, and to be able to um, input all of the services that you currently offer as it relates to swing bed services. And then um, it will compare um, relative to, you know, whether it's um, kind of find where there potentially may be gaps in terms of your, your swing bed services. Um, and, and it will allow a hospital to identify um, if there's opportunity to expand services related to the swing bed program, um, as well as being able to um, utilize the, the data for, for marketing purposes um, and, and to really, you know, to understand and use that, the information um, about what our swing bed program can currently do and use that as, as promotional material. Um, 
so again, it, it's an opportunity to look at what you currently offer for your swing bed program and what you potentially could expand the swing bed program um, and, and use that. And then I think this is the last one. Um, and this is related to patient satisfaction, um, excellence training. So this is the training program that Rhonda had mentioned. Um, again, it's looking at your um, HCAP survey data um, and, and looking and then holding a, a training workshop. Um, and again, it, this would be a virtual training workshop to understand kind of where, you know, what are some of the best practices? Um, where do you fall in line um, it, within, in, within those best practices? And what are some of the recommendations um, to improve on some of the, the scores that may be lagging, um, you know, whether it's, it's your, your discharge planning score or, or transitions of care, you know, we'll be able to highlight um, what, you know, some improvement opportunities um, through this training program. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Lindsay. And we'll go back to that in just a minute and have you all ask questions if you want. So um, some major milestones for the special projects. Uh, so today, of course, the kickoff webinar, uh, the deadline again to get your project um, selection to me just by title uh, is July 2nd, a week from today. Um, and then we will begin creating um, the plans for the projects. And so the projects will actually be contacted conducted July, August, and September. The deadline for project completion is September 15th. Um, after that, uh, Kiona will be sending you all a feedback assessment just to get your, your thoughts about the project and the helpfulness of it. Um, and then the deadline to return the, self, the assessment will be the 23rd. So, um, you know, again, a couple things to keep in mind. Um, about three, July, August, two, two and a half months, two and a half months or so um, to, or two months to complete the project. Um, you know, I was really noticing that as Lindsay was talking about each of those projects, the time for you that would be dedicated to that is anywhere from two hours to six hours. So um, I know, again, we know that you guys are busy and we're trying to keep this as minimal as possible, but I think what's really nice is that it is totally, uh, individualized to your hospital and what your need is right now and um, then the feedback and the, or the report is totally individualized to where you are at this moment so um, um, I think that it's really just it's helpful to um, know that you have control over the project that you choose um, Andy if you'll go to the next slide all right, so this is a reminder of us and who we are. And so I wanted to open it up and see if you all have questions. And as we're doing that, Andy, if you would go back to slide 10, please, which is the overview of all the possible projects, just so folks can see that. Um, in case anybody joined a little bit late, we went through each of these projects, identified it exactly um, a little information about each one, what it was going to cover. Um, this is being recorded, so we will get this out to you as soon as possible, along with a document that describes these in detail. And But this is an opportunity, if questions are on your mind right now, you can ask those. You will just need to either type them in the chat box, or if you will go to the bottom of your screen, you'll see a little microphone that says mute. And if you will unclick that, you will be able to, to talk. So I'm going to pause there and see what kinds of questions folks have, if any. So hearing none, and I see nothing in the chat box, um, uh, Lindsay or anybody from the SHIRT team, any last comments, um, anything else we need to share? I mean, I, this is Lindsay. Um, I think what I would just share is if you do have any questions as it relates to kind of the uh, I know we outlined time commitment, but you know, whether it's what's involved in the data request or what's, um, you know, what will I get as a deliverable, you know, feel free to, to reach out um, to me. Yeah. 
And um, in fact, when I send the email out with the recording of this, I'll make sure that I include your contact information, Lindsay, so that folks can do that. But certainly if you went on the Stroudwater uh, website, you could also find her contact information or it would also be in your work plan from your SHIRT project. Um, or if you don't find it any of those places, just contact me and I will, I will provide that to you as soon as possible. All right. Okay, well, we promised you short and sweet and just to the point. So again, some things to think about. July 2nd, let me know what project you'd like to participate in, and then we will be, get the ball rolling to connect you with, with um, Lindsay or the Stroudwater consultant that's working on that project, and we'll get things moving pretty quickly. Um, in the meantime, you just got 33 minutes back to your day. So use it wisely. And thank you for taking some time today to join us. And don't hesitate to let us know what we can do for you. Thank you guys so much for all you're doing. And we look forward to working with you very, very soon on this. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you.